Right, so this presentation is introducing you to your third assessment, which is the annotated bibliography. So you need to have completed the activities from last week, the Let's Go activities in Module 4, which are to do with analysing the topic for the research essay, clustering, concept mapping or mind mapping your prior knowledge about that topic, and you might also like to be thinking ahead now as to what you think your overall position on the topic might be, and most importantly, what the main ideas are that you're going to be researching. So these main ideas are the two problems that you've decided are of most interest to you in relation to this research essay topic. So what do you think are the two key problems that the Australian lifestyle has caused for the natural environment? And then you're going to look for information about those problems, research, and also research about the way they're being addressed. So the annotated bibliography is the first step in doing that. So be aware, while you may have an idea about the topic at the moment and the issues around these problems, um, those ideas may change slightly as you find yourself reading and doing your research. So if you're wondering just what an annotated bibliography is, it's a fancy name for something that's really quite simple. So a bibliography is a list of sources that a student consults when they're researching a topic, but unlike your reference list, um, not all of them need to appear within the final essay. So a bibliography is like a reference list, it looks like a reference list and just has the um, citation information that we've looked at already, but with the annotated part in front of it, the um, assignment will include, after each citation, a summary of what the resource is about and an evaluation of how it might be useful or not useful for you um, in your research. So, you need to be asking yourself about the problems you're investigating, what's the question about, and then decide what kind of material are you going to be looking for, what, what do you think are the most useful types of sources um, for information on the problems you have chosen, and that's where you need to be. Um, thinking back to the information literacy modules that you've completed or are working on in preparation skills for university. So those sessions in PSU are teaching you how to effectively use the library and other information sources. You need to apply those search skills now to finding information and resource research for your annotated bibliography. So an annotated bibliography will have a citation, a summary of the source and then your assessment of it and as to particularly how valuable or relevant it will be to you. So you are going to actually describe how you found the source, so exactly what steps you went through when you went to the library catalogue or you went to Google or Google Scholar or to the ABS and describe those steps and that will be seen in the models that you can look at in this module. So as well as the information about the source, the purpose here is for us to be able to see that you've got some basic skills and knowledge of information literacy and that you can use them because you'll need to be doing that as an undergraduate student. And often you will find that undergraduate courses are now including annotated bibliographies as part of their assessment. So having done one here as part of essay writing is going to be hugely valuable to you. So our annotated bibliography only needs to have three sources, but when you write your research essay, we're expecting that you have six or more. So you will find um, research along the way that won't appear in this assignment, but hold on to it because you will probably find it useful for writing your research essay. So you need to use the template that you can find in the week eight section of Moodle. Now go and look at the models of annotated bibliographies that are there as well. Carefully read the task description and I'll also be providing a detailed help sheet and submission guidelines just like I did for assessment two. And make sure that you are asking questions of either your campus lecturer or um, of me if you're a distance student and you will do really well on this assignment. So all the best with that.